Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where three Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. We are so relieved to be back at full strength today. Welcome back Anders Motz. Thank you, thank you. And Andy Hageman. How you doing? And myself, Dave, we're all back in our natural habitats to take you deep into the workings of Pro Tools technique and ethos uh, to help the user community get the best out of our chosen door. In this uh, in this week's episode, we are looking at a question from Jari. I think that's how it's pronounced. Forgive me if it's not. Uh, from the Pro Tools Answers group, and he asks this: Hi guys, does Pro Tools 2022 work with DigiDesign HD IO96 or 192 interfaces? And this is a great question. This one pops up fairly often and, and I think it's a natural one. You know, there's a lot of the older uh, DigiDesign tech out there on the secondhand market um, still with the, the same connectors as uh, as the modern HDX um, almost. stuff. Well, yeah, OK, almost. Um, and it's quite natural to wonder whether this uh, this older tech will work with the newer tech um, and, and largely because the resale values of uh, the older technology is really uh, quite attractive. Um, mm. So you guys spend a lot more time or have spent a lot more time working with the HD tech than I have. Um, so have, is there any commentary on how well the older uh, DigiDesign units will work with uh, modern HDX and HD native systems? Let me let me start with the as as an Avid employee uh, with the Avid official stance, and and then let me let Anders fill in the blanks on that. Um, so it, we have three categories of of hardware. Really, um, we've got the things that have been tested. We know they work, they're officially supported. And and really that's the only category that is officially supported, right? Mm -hmm. So things like the Omni, the the Nexus, all that stuff. Um, the, sorry, Matrix. Then well, we have- The, Matrix, the, the Nexus is also supported. <laughs> it also, yes, it's also supported, but it wasn't what I was thinking. <laughs> Nexus and Matrix. Um, then we have at anything else is is unsupported so if it's not supported it's unsupported which sounds like the most basic thing that anybody has ever said except for the fact that there are things that we have tested that we know it doesn't work and it's not supported so it's it's been tested we know it doesn't work not supported there's other stuff mm. that hasn't been tested because it's it's out of date or whatever and and and, and, we've and there's, moved no on. Need, there's no need <clears throat> there's no need mm -hmm. to um and so we haven't tested it and we don't support it because it hasn't been tested. Not because it doesn't work, but because we haven't tested. May it work? It might. May it not work? It might not. Mm. If you have a problem with it, don't come to us because it's not supported. So that's kind of the, the AVID's categories of, of, of support, which is not unusual for, for, for our industry. Most, most folks you know, operate in that way. Now, that being said, the anecdotal evidence is what Andrews is going to tell you right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm, <laughs> I've got one of my 192s right here. Look at the guns <laughs> on that guy. Uh, yeah, look, and that's look because at, I'm listing the Oh, look, the look at, oh look at that. Oh. The, the, the oh. fact that he's wearing a shirt from Baby Gap also helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the uh, the the 192 and the the 96 will probably work. Dave in actually setup. swooned. And as you can't do that again, well, <laughs> guys, this is not the show for this. <laughs> oh, sorry. no, 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 it is. <laughs> but continue. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, the 192s and the 96 will probably work for you. Uh, meaning, and I say work with in. Uh, it's like with some ref reservations. Uh, so I'm, I've tested these uh, in my setup here, and they've worked. There are a couple of graphical issues with the 192s that I got. Uh, so if you go to the I/O setup, you you will see some graphical glitches. Uh, and uh, but other than that, you will get signal into Pro Tools and signal out of Pro Tools through those interfaces. Uh, Dave said that it's the same connector. It's not quite the the DigiLink port that used to be on on the 192s have shrunk for the HDX and HD native cards. Yep. So that's a digit. But you can get adapters. Yeah, there's an adapter yep. as as Andy said here. So you need the adapter. But other than that, 
you are probably fine. And I mean, it's just an amazing buy. You can mm. buy one of these for a couple of hundred euros and it's so much value and still a great sounding interface. So if you're on a limited budget and don't mind uh, not being officially supported, uh, you can build an amazing rig uh, for very little money. Now, one thing I will say, though, um, regarding the sound, you're, you're right. For bang for the buck, if you know, mm. if and when it works, great. Bang for the buck, you can't beat it. Yeah. Um, that being said, it looks the 192 has honest. the blessing and curse of looking just like um, an HDIO, yeah. right? The same chassis. The only you know, the, the front even looks the same, mm. except for a different color. Don't confuse that with the sound quality because the HDIO, the clocking and the components in there have been seriously upgraded. Mm -hmm. So the clarity that you get in the HDIO, you're not going to get the same kind of clarity with, with the 192, but you don't get the same price as well. So, I mean, just yeah. just know what you're getting into and do know that if you pick up that 192, that, you know, and Xander says, you're probably fine. But if you, you have any problems mm -hmm. and it catches fire or anything like that, then, you know, one place you know you're not going to go to is Abbott support. Yeah, that also... But Anders did say he'd support it, right? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so, uh, just he's, he's, just, he's just that kind of guy, Andy. Uh, no, but, but, he but, is. But, he's but, but there is, this question is actually deeper than you first think. So you might think like, yeah, okay, so my my DigiDesign 192 is not supported, meaning any other configuration in or any other component in my system will still be supported. But mm -hmm. it's actually, if you've got one of these in your system and you're calling Avid support, they will ask you, like, what do you have connected? And you will say, yeah, I've got the Omni, which is supported, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I've got the 192. And they will say, yeah, get rid of the 192 because it's not supported. Uh, so that might be the harsh reality of of the support, um, right, Andy? Oh yeah, no, yeah. I mean, that's, that's you know, that's what limited testing, which everybody has to contend with. You know, that's, that's what that means, is that, you know, certain things won't be supported. Could they be a problem? Yes, are they probably a problem in, this, in the case of the 192? Probably not, but we, we can't count on that. Well, that, that's the, um, the thing with modern uh, problem solving with mixing old tech and new tech, isn't it? To be able to sure. problem solve properly with modern technology and modern software, you've got to get rid of any of the anomalies. And as Ander said, you know, the, uh, any of the old tech, if you've got it mixed in there, that's going to be the first thing to go to, to figure out where the, where the problems lie. Yeah, and one other thing, I mean, buying a 192 today, and I, as, I, as of this date of recording today, it might work. But let's say there comes a new Protos version tomorrow, which mm -hmm. I don't know, or, or the next week. And it could be that that Protos version actually ruins the ability for the 192 sure. to, to work. We don't know that. And, yep. and that's one huge risk for you to take if you're buying one of these interfaces. You should know that it might not work mm -hmm. with the next version of Pro Tools. But it the might. lucky the, the it, lucky thing is with buying secondhand stuff, and I tend to buy a lot of my stuff on the pre-owned market uh, because you don't lose anything on the resale value. So if you buy it for a couple of hundred bucks, suddenly it, it doesn't run with Pro Tools anymore just sell it on for pretty much what you paid for it. You're not going to lose sure. very much in the trading. Um, so, Anders, you're using your 192s with the modern HDX cards or modern HD uh, natives? I've done that. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm just running the Matrix on my HDX system. And for my HD native system, which is over there with mm. a Mac Mini, I've got the Omni as the main interface with mm -hmm. monitor controller. And I've got one... Uh, one 192 still got three other 192s lying around yeah, yeah. Uh, so if anyone wants <laughs> maybe to maybe this is the guy to buy <laughs> from <laughs> i um i i might i'd be interested to take one of those off you actually just to see to be yeah. able to compare the two they, um, um i'll i'll send one to you <laughs> no, when, when you come over you can bring it with you and um, yeah stick it in your no, cabin I, I mean as as andy said bang for the buck Name any interface uh, under like a thousand euros oh, or no. dollar. Oh it, no, it, it's it's ridiculous how good. I mean, I mean, the 192 not that long ago was was the was the flagship interface of, yeah. of Avid Systems, right? So, mm, yeah. and a lot of great work was being done on them. So the, the sound quality is great. Is the sound quality now better? 
Yes, it is. But but you know, well, again, we, you know, yeah. we, it's it's for the dollar. We, it's great. We'd certainly hope that every time there's a new iteration of tech, it would progressively increase, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Otherwise, yeah. what's the point? Uh, but there are there are plenty of people that are still out there on working with HD8 as an example. Sure. You know, with those old uh, the older one nine twos. Um, so they're still perfectly usable. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I hope um, I hope uh, you got something out of this discussion. And uh, if you're on the fence on buying a one ninety two, we, what's our recommendation? The only thing you don't want to get caught with, um, because if you're buying it on on eBay or, or or through the secondhand market, you might just be buying the interface. Mm -hmm. So is and I think Anders, you alluded to this, is that the cable from an HD native Thunderbolt or an HD native card or an HDX card is a is a connector called a DigiLink mini connector. Mm. And it's about, I don't know, yes. about an inch and a half long and it, it, it has screws that, that lock it into the card. Very, very robust, a tiny little thing, very robust. Um, the connector on the 192 is the original DigiLink connector, which was, I think about maybe two inches, a, mm. a little bit bigger. Yeah. And it has this kind of a, a pinch Mm -hmm. uh, little grabber, which was not fantastic. I, anybody who's ever used 192s know that 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 connector, you know, you bump into it and and you could you know, could knock it out. You will not not that that's a huge problem if it's if it's mounted in a rack, but you will need to get a DigiLink Mini to DigiLink regular uh, or classic or whatever whatever the original DigiLink mm -hmm. to DigiLink Mini cable in order to make a connection between your HD native or HDX. And, and that interface. Yeah, and there's a male and a female version also, as well, so you need That's to right. really make sure that you're getting the right connector there. Now, there's there's just maybe one more thing to mention about the preamps uh, in these things, or that the inputs, rather, they're, su they're supposed to be clean, aren't they? They're supposed to be connected to external pre's. There right. are no preamps in them. Uh, right? It's the connections, yeah. yes. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. supposed to be connected to external pre's. Mm -hmm. um, so, but they've got. Uh, I mean, you can still plug your synths into them uh, directly, uh, and you can you can switch the impedance uh, so that you can it. They accept synths directly. Or am I on thin ice here, Andy? I think no, I'm no, not, no. You, yeah. you've you've got, you've you've got basically. You've got there's two a lot rows of different of inputs, kinds actually. of. Yeah, there's you know with the with the 192 and um, which and the HDIO, which is the the successor to that. There are a number of different configurations. You can have one that's just digital. Um, you can have one that's a little bit of both, which is what Anders is showing there. So Anders, if you, if you could hold that for another 45 minutes or so. Um, <laughs> there, so quite on, <laughs> on on the on the left hand side. We have at the top, we have analog inputs, um, and you've got plus 4 dB or minus 10 dB levels. Um, you've got analog output, that's software switchable between 10 and, and, and 4. Um, and then if you move over there, there you go. Um, then you, and, and this is all optional. This is all configured, which is something you need to make sure when you get onto eBay. Um, this is also, you, you also have the option of putting in a digital I.O., which gives you ASEBU, um, TDIF, which is rarely used these days, and then eight channels of, of ADAT optical. And then moving on, you could see here the um, the built-in I.O. that or the enclosure I.O., which includes ASEBU, uh, coax SPDIF, um, and optical SPDIF as well. Um, and you can see at the very bottom uh, are two uh, connectors, one that says expansion port and primary port. Those are your DigiLink connectors mm. that you need to get a cable that goes to the DigiLink Mini. Mm. And by the way, um, uh, you might think that these in, uh, the connectors on the enclosure uh, could be used without any cards in them, but th uh, that's not the case. You need uh, at least one at card least one. in the unit for it to work. So don't buy an empty chassis. Some some people are selling empty chassis, mm. and uh, you cannot use the ASEBU or ADATs or anything on them unless there's a card in them. Yeah, and it could be like it could be one analog input. It could be one analog output. It could be one digital I.O. It just has to be one card as a minimum. And But mm -hmm. there's a lot of different configurations. Just make sure that you know what you're buying. Yep. Indeed. Awesome. I would say that the, the uh, configuration that you just saw there, which is you know half analog and half digital, is probably the most common one that I've seen. Yep. 
great stuff. So in in short, they they do work with modern Pro Tools techs. It's a little bit of adapting that needs to happen. Um, well, they should work, but if they don't work, you're just going to have to sell it on, cut your losses, sell it on, yep. work out another solution. And maybe someone else will have some uh, uh, some success with it, who knows. Um, but yeah, the answer to it is that they do generally work, just not supported. Um, so uh, we will duck out of this episode. Hopefully that answered a few people's questions. Um, thank you very much to Anders to uh, for showing us all of his kit. <laughs> Thank you. We'll just leave that one dangling. And thank you very much to Andy. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, my God. We'll just leave uh, that one hanging as well. Sure. <laughs> 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 thank you to all of you guys for watching if you haven't yet done so uh, hit like on our video uh, it really helps us out uh, hit subscribe on our channel as well if you hit the bell icon it'll notify you every time we release new videos and um, you can ever head over to protoolsanswers.com you can subscribe over there well andy will send you uh, uh, an email every so often to let you know what's going on uh, you can also join our pro tools inner circle as well uh, where there are a couple of benefits including master classes uh, monthly master classes with us um some of us in various different configurations um but uh i think anders is uh, going to be preparing a, a master class schedule for the back end of this year yep. i don't think we've got any so uh, you can uh, come and join our inner circle you'll also get access to our uh, closed uh, discord community as well which is uh, growing really nicely anders they're having a good mm -hmm. time in that thing yep it's been really nice to hang out in um all these me to say is uh, my name's dave this is pro tools answers thanks for joining us we'll see you next time and we're out. <laughs>